friends, it's Michelle. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my crazy craft room. Today is a perfect time for tea with me. And my subject today is one of my favorite subjects, mushrooms. I love mushrooms. I love to go in the woods and forage them. I love to be inspired by them. I love to cook with them. Jeez, I love everything about them. And I want to share how inspiring they can be in your work, in your art, and in your life with you. So grab a cuppa and let's get into mushroom mania. So here we are, ready to start Tea With Me, this episode of Tea With Me that is all about mushrooms. And today I am drinking a tea that is all about mushrooms. It is an organic reishi mushroom with rubios and orange peel. So I'm going to give that a little squeeze, see how it is. Not bad. So, it is at the time of recording, November, and we actually had snow overnight, which means mushroom season is coming to a close. But depending on where you are in the world and what your climate is, you may have mushrooms year-round. And I'm slightly jealous, although I can tell you that I have found mushrooms and the evidence of mushrooms in the woods even in, in the winter time. So I don't think there's ever a time where I can't find a mushroom. In fact, um, in October, we went to Arizona for our 30th wedding anniversary, which is a desert, most of the climate there. And we were in Sedona, which is a desert, a high altitude desert. And we went on a um, hiking path and even in Arizona, I found mushrooms. I was really shocked at Arizona's climate because as much as it's a desert and as much as I pictured, uh, you know, cactuses and tumbleweeds and dry sand and all of that, um, Arizona is a beautiful state full of all sorts of environments and mini ecosystems. And we found the most beautiful trail with ferns and mushrooms in the middle of the desert. So... Um, you can find mushrooms anywhere. So here are some of my Arizona mushroom photos. It's shocking that these are actually photos all taken in Arizona. I didn't expect Arizona to have um, areas that reminded me of New England. As we were walking, I said this could be woods next to my house. It was so surprising, but Arizona was surprising. Now, in Tea With Me, I usually try to share inspirational things uh, that other artists or creative folks might be interested in. And since we're talking about mushrooms, I always love to have books. Now, books are wonderful for um, reference material if you're painting or drawing. They're, they can be great for collages, um, fussy cutting out. They can be great for junk journals. So here are just a few. I'm going to move this right here so that I don't get anything on fire. And I'm going to share a few of my favorite mushroom books. Now, I generally try to um, put books that are easily available. And I honestly don't know if these are because two of them I got when I was in London. So they are from England. Doesn't mean you couldn't order them maybe on thrift books or eBay or, um, you know, Amazon used books. So I'll put them out there and then you can decide. I have three different sizes. So I'll start with the big one first. This is Giuseppe Pace, Mushrooms of the World, a thousand species of varieties of American, European, and Asiatic mushrooms. And what I like about this book, let me move this aside a little bit. I don't want any accidents, liquid or fire. And look at even my, even my collaged um, coaster has a mushroom on it. Is that this, the, the paper is really creamy thick. It is not coated. So that's really helpful if you're a junk journaler. But there's so many beautiful illustrations in this book of mushrooms. Um, great for fussy cutting, great for source material, uh, great for, jeez, oh, all sorts of things. I have a whole library of mushroom books because I do like to forage. So a lot of those mushroom books are more like um, 
guides so that I can pick the correct mushrooms. This one is all inspiration for me. And it shows you all the colors and textures that mushrooms can come in, like these blues and greens and pinks and purples and browns. Look at this, mushrooms on mushrooms. Like that's amazing to me. Um, I just absolutely am so inspired by these. <sighs> They're not plants. They are fungi. Um, they are such a critical part of our world. The mycelium that's below the surface of the world is what's communicating with trees. It's a building block of life. Um, I absolutely recommend the documentary Fantastic Fungi. I think it's on um, Netflix. Just They're just fascinating, fascinating organisms. And um, some of them are delicious. Look at that color, like this blue color. I just absolutely adore it. So this book is a great book, um, printed in Spain, so I'm not sure. I'm assuming that it was bought locally, but I really don't know. I got it at an estate sale for $5. Um, this is a great book. Another couple of books that I'll show you. Um, this one here is vintage. It's Colin's Guide to Mushrooms and Toadstools. I love this book. I actually have two copies of this book. Um, I believe the first one I got in England, and then I ordered, look at this, yep, it was three pounds, and I think the second copy I got was um, on Thrift Books. I like that on the spine, it has a little mushroom, and it says Colin's Guide to Mushrooms. Really nice, nice little book. And look at the end papers inside. Oh my gosh, it's just one of my favorite books. So I have two of these. This one is the one that I'm never gonna cut. And then this one, you can see I've started taking pages out of it. Um, this one was a used book, a lot of writing on it. And um, I love in this books, the color of the patina of, of the, um, 1963. I love the patina of the paper, but I also love the drawings. It is a fabulous book for like, um, for like fussy cutting, for junk journals. It's just, oh, look, I have ripped out of this one. So I guess I've ripped out of both of them. So maybe neither one of them is my reference book. <laughs> <laughs> I just love these books. I really love the end pages the most. They um, are just really terrific. So this one I only paid three pounds for. I believe the second one I got on thrift books. I never buy a book on thrift books for more than six or seven dollars. So I'm I'm sure that you are would be able to find this. This one I think was a takeoff of this. It's made by Collins. This is a gem guide which I'm guessing is an English, yes, because it's in pounds, $1.95. And look at the cute little mushroom on the spine. And it's all the same mushrooms, I think, but the the uh, illustrations are a little bit more updated, a little bit more um, current, but they're the perfect size for junk journaling, tags, fussy cutting. This book is just a great little gem to have. Uh, let's see if there's a year on this. 1982. My guess is if you are in uh, England, you probably can get this pretty easily. I don't know about America, but I would say I would get this book first if you want to cut a book up because the size is so perfect. The pictures are perfect and uh, I really love it. I probably would get this one next and this one I would I, I can only use this for re for um, reference, but hey, if you're not really into mushrooms, I'm sure you'd want to cut any of them. So those are the three books. I will put their information in the text box below the show notes, as I always do. Okay, so let's talk about a little mushroom inspiration. Right before, um, I think in September... I did a very big project. I made these, all of these clay mushrooms, which I will link the video series below because my friend Yuta from, um, from Germany, she has this clay line that she developed and I was trying out the clay and I decided to make all these little mini mushrooms and I had so much fun doing them 
and I wanted to make a really special project with them. So I did make a video series on how to make these mushrooms. Oops. And then how to go about making like test tubes filled with mushrooms and making them look vintage. They're all a part of my naturalist series and you can find that on my YouTube channel. I will put the links below. I made a bunch of single test tubes. I made a um, single box and then I made a box that has three test tubes that have clay mushrooms in them. Again, I'm showing you these because I find that mushrooms can be such interesting specimens to collect. And if you're not able to make clay mushrooms, I don't know if you can see here, these are just dried mushrooms on this one here. And um, I think they look cute too. So mushrooms are just these really fun things to study. They, they're really reminiscent of um, the naturalist time in the Victorian period. They really speak to the whole specimen um, trend that we find in paper craft. And I love the idea of the woodland and the magic that happens with mushrooms. So this is one way that mushrooms have inspired me. They've inspired me to work um, in clay. Another way that they've inspired me is with spore prints. Now, spore prints are basically um, a, a fingerprint of a mushroom. And the reason we use spore prints is because um, they help identify a mushroom. Last year, I made this little, this little book and um, it's my little spore print book. And I made this little journal out of spore prints. And I do have a video of how to make spore prints on my channel, which I will link below. Um, all of the, the art in this book are spore prints. Now, I use spore prints as art, but spore prints have a very practical purpose. As a forager, you want to be very careful about what you bring home and what you eat if you're going to be eating it. Um dangerous deadly mushrooms are everywhere they're in every climate and they're all around us and usually they don't look like the things that would look deadly or um, dangerous so it's very easy to pick a mushroom and um, if you ate it you could get very sick in fact a family, I just read about a family who three members of the family died within three days of eating the wrong mushroom they had picked in their yard. Uh, so mushrooms are nothing that they should be respected. They're beautiful, wonderful organisms, but they can't, that they need to be respected. So I forage, but I forage only five types. Those are the five types I feel safe with. And one of the reasons why it's so hard to forage safely is because Almost every mushroom has a look-alike. It has a safe mushroom, and then it has a mushroom that's not safe. And one of the only ways, there are several ways to identify which is which, but one of the ways is by making a spore print. So making a spore print gives this definite um, pattern. There's a color. So when you're like, let's say you're you're choosing a, a, a mushroom that you want to eat, and you know that it has white a white pattern with gills, and um, that's that's another piece of the puzzle. That's another piece to say, yes, this is the correct mushroom. So people make spore prints to actually correctly identify mushrooms, but I make them because I find them really fascinating, and I like the art that comes from them. Mushrooms have either gills, which are the lines on the bottom, or they have um, pores, which you know, are like the pores of our skin, teeny, tiny, tiny dots. This would be a pattern made by a, by a, a pore bottom, and this would be one that's made by a gill. And I'm going to have some video soon um, in this video that shows how I make my spore prints and shows some undersides of mushrooms, but I just want to give you that 
that identification. So then what I do after I make the spore prints is the spores have released onto the surface of a paper. I could take my finger and totally uh, smudge that, that print because it's just sitting on the paper. So at that point, I can't really use that in a craft. There's spores sitting all over that paper. So I scan them in my scanner, or you can use your phone. There's scanning apps on your phone and you could scan the top of it. And then I take it into an editing software program and then I make those spores different colors and I enhance them, I blow them up, I shrink them down. Here is some spore paper, um, artist paper that I recently created and will actually be featured in the newest issue of Strawberry Moon magazine. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but these are all spore prints. Now, spore prints don't come in purple like this. This I changed with my digital program and don't get all uh, worried about digital program this is something you can do on your phone you can use filters like an instagram or on your phone to change um, spore print colors on your phone if you took pictures and then you can just print them off on your printer so how do you make a spore print well it's pretty easy you collect a bunch of mushrooms and then you snip the um, cap off away from the stem you can see that cap has gills, and this one here, which is a little off camera, has pores. And you're just gonna have a whole collection of these mushrooms, and then you're gonna lay them on black or white paper, and you are going to then um, take plastic cups or bowls and put them on top of the mushrooms. And the reason we do that is so that we can better control and contain um, the spores when they release them onto the paper. I have a more in-depth explanation of this on a video that's linked below. I just wanted to show you sort of a fast little look at the process and what they look like when you pull the mushrooms up the next morning. Um, 12 to 24 hours is about all it takes and it is so exciting to pull the mushrooms off the paper and see some of the most interesting prints, even from the mushrooms that you don't think will make a print. It can be very unexpected. Look how beautiful that is. And um, sometimes you get prints you don't expect. Sometimes um, it's a complete hit. And sometimes it's a little bit of a miss. But it's fun and it's free. So, oh, I love that. Look at that. Look at the variation in those. It's just you know, so interesting to me. Now that last one is dark brown. That should have been on a white piece of paper. And that's honestly how you learn. You can always put it also on translucent um, projector paper so that you can just change out the color underneath uh, so that you don't have to worry about what color the spores are going to be. Look at even these little tiny guys gave me some really interesting uh, little prints. So just super fun. Um, curiosity and playfulness is really all you need and um, definitely if you're doing it in the house you're going to want to try to cover them so that the spores stay contained some of them are not as pretty as others those dark spore prints you just saw definitely a little bit different sometimes the caps can get a little mushy so um, you might have to let the paper dry out but so, so fun and so, so interesting. I hope this video gives you a little bit better idea of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the process of making prints and how easy it can be. Like I said, there is a lot more information online and on the video that I've posted below, but I just wanted to give you a visual to go along with um, what a spore print is when I use that term. So once you... Uh, make a spore print and you photograph or scan them in, what do you do? Well, let's take a peek. You can cut them out like this and make these really interesting background textures and colors. Here are just some of the spore prints that I have printed off and I have used as essentially collage fodder. Um, these are all prints I have made from mushrooms this year. And then I take these and you're like, well, how would you, somebody even use that, right? Well, you can use it 
you can use it literally or you can use it like really um, without somebody even knowing it's a mushroom. So here's a collage that I did. And this whole background in blue is the close-up burst of a spore print that I just used a filter to make blue. This is a spore print. This is a spore print. This is a spore print. I love how it is. It's not a literal, like you don't know that this is a mushroom. This collage has nothing to do with mushrooms, but it's just an interesting pattern. It's an interesting, fascinating way to take something that you found in nature and make it a part of your art. Now, like I, I, I said, I'm very, very appreciative and so excited to announce that I'm being featured um, in the winter edition of Strawberry Moon Magazine, which is an art journal, art journal magazine. It's digital and physical. I have purchased it digitally, so I don't have a physical copy to show you right here, but I have a whole article about how um, I collaborate with mushrooms to make art. And here are some of the collages that will be featured in that magazine. Um, I'm going to show them quickly because I want them to be featured more for the magazine. I had made these two um, for the magazine. But I'm going to show you this one here because this one I think is really interesting. It speaks to our sort of vintage Victorian style in a non-literal way. I used colors of the fall. I've used a lot of spore prints within the work. But if you did not know that these were spore prints, you would just find them to be interesting textures. And I really love how by adding parts of nature to this um, collage, I have a butterfly, a paper butterfly, um, Lots of layers that I did in traditional junk journal, art journal ways, right? With layering paper and spraying sprays and, um, you know, using jelly prints. Like all the ways that we make texture and layers. And then, you know, adding some vintage, vintage ledger paper and then an actual fern from outside. And then adding these spore prints. I just find it to be a way that I personally can incorporate nature into my art. It's something that, as I've developed my style, I think when we all get into art, we don't, maybe we don't know a style, it kind of develops over time. And what I've really found is that using nature in my art is really a big part of my aesthetic. And mushrooms, because they're so important to me, have found their way into my work as well, but in non-traditional ways. Here's another collage that um, I did. And again, I just really loved the burst in the back. I loved how it was um, very much abstract. You don't know what that is if, if, if if you if I didn't tell you, you would not know what that is. And um, I just find it very effective. So this, this is a way that you can take mushrooms and bring it into your work, literally or abstract wise. And the fun part is, is that by collecting mushrooms, you have a record of what was blooming in your woods. Um, let's say you go, you know, on vacation somewhere. You can even make spore prints on vacation and then photograph them before you go. Um, you don't need anything other than a knife, mushrooms, and some white or black paper. That's really all you need. I will link the videos and the information so that you have more if you want to learn this process. Um, an article that will feature a lot of this will be in Strawberry Moon coming up. I will link them below if you want to pre-order that magazine. Um, and you can always reach out to me on questions. I do wash my hands after I touch the spores. I am careful about letting the spores go off of my house. Um, but honestly, it's a, a pretty safe, as long as you're not ingesting them, it's, it's, it's a fun, fun activity. So what else can you do with mushrooms? If you want to be artsy, but maybe you don't want to do spore prints, maybe you don't want to do clay, I have another idea for you. And this idea isn't 
isn't just an idea that um, is about mushrooms. It could be about any collection of similar items. It could be shells. It could be flowers. It could be just the things that you inc that you find along the way on a walk. What I find really inspiring to do with mushrooms is to make flat lay artwork. It's a very straightforward process. I simply collect specimens from the woods, all different shapes and sizes and colors, and then I bring them home and I put them on either dark poster board or this is a chalkboard, and I arrange them interestingly by color, shape, size, whatever, and then I photograph them. And I love the results. They are like a picture of what was in the woods that day on my walk. And I do this year round, and it's a really fun, creative thing to do. So just seeing those photos, um, hopefully you get an idea of what I'm talking about. All you need is some kind of flat, high contrast piece of poster board. It could, that was a chalkboard that, that had a scalloped edge. Um, it can really be anything. And then you just take your specimens and you line them up and you take pictures with your phone and you can, it is such a creative thing to do. It's free. It's fun. It's something you can do with the whole family. It can become a memory of a event of a trip of a place that you visited. You can take the pictures and have them printed off as postcards or stationery. There is so many things you can do with nature. There's so many things that you can do with mushrooms. Um, but the flat lay is one of my favorite things to do in the fall, to find a whole bunch of beautiful mushrooms and leaves and take them and arrange them that is fun. It's exercise, it's creative, and then it's done like in an hour. And the way I clean up is I bring them all to my compost pile. <laughs> so I hope that inspires you as well. Okay. So now for the last thing I want to talk about, we've talked about crafts, we've talked about inspiration, we've talked about spore prints. Let me talk just a little bit about foraging. Foraging for mushrooms has become a wonderful hobby for me. I had absolutely no idea how complex um, the world of mycology was. There are so there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of types of mushrooms. Foraging is a skill. It is a science. It is to be respected. It's hard because there's so much to learn and to keep yourself safe, you really need to have a network of people that can help you identify mushrooms. I personally only stick to mushrooms that really don't have um, like an evil twin. I They're very distinct, they're very specific, I can spot them, and there's something I'm really wanting for my diet. They're not just something that's I'm doing just to say, oh, I ate this one or I ate that one. Um, and I always, always have two people second my identification. I don't tell them what I think it is. I get the identification from them and make sure all three of us line up before I eat anything. One of my favorite, favorite mushrooms is called Chicken of the Woods. It's not really that. That's just the nickname. Um, and we'll put the actual name underneath. There's several versions of this, depending on what kind of tree it grows on and whether it grows on the ground. Here's a picture of a specimen that I actually found, or my friend Elizabeth found, this um, past fall. But it is the best vegan substitute for chicken there is. And it's well tolerated, meaning not many people are allergic to it. There are people that are allergic to mushrooms. Most people can tolerate this, but um, like with any mushroom, they tell you only to have a teeny tiny bit um, of a already approved edible mushroom to even see if you can tolerate it. And even a choice edible mushroom should never ever, ever be eaten raw. It still needs to be cooked because of the toxins that it absorbs from um, its host. So um, having said that, 
I absolutely love Chicken of the Woods. Um, one of my friends was hiking who lives locally. She's a collage artist too. Hi, Elizabeth. And uh, she saw this mushroom. She texted me a picture in the location and I went out and I gathered a bunch of it and I absolutely love making fried chicken of the woods. And here's a picture of that meal, which is a delicious. So that wraps up this episode of Tea With Me. Um, I'm going to finish my mushroom tea. I'm going to thank you so much for joining me, whether you're a new subscriber, a new viewer, or you're somebody who's been around a while. I love introducing things to you. I hope that this was interesting. I hope that it inspires you to look around and see what's growing next to you, to incorporate some nature into your art. And I hope it makes you look at the lowly mushroom just a little bit differently. I love sharing my passions. And honestly, mushrooms have become such an important part of my life. I find them symbolic, inspirational, and I think they're kind of the hope of the future. I think you're going to see a lot more about how mushrooms can contribute to our health um, medically and um, how important they are to our world. Thank you for sharing your time with me. And um, until the next Tea With Me, bye. If you've stuck around this long, you've obviously been smitten with, with mushrooms. I want to show you one last thing. Um, for those of you who like the curiosities or the weird things in the mushroom world, there is a kind of bolate. Um, I will put the name on, on the screen right here. And it looks pretty typical. Brown, yellow pores on the bottom, nothing too interesting. But what gets really interesting is when you cut it open it turns blue almost immediately. They sometimes call these indigo bolates. They call them inky. There's all sorts of descriptions for them. Um, I just find it so fun to cut them and um, bruise them with my finger and watch the dye from inside the mushroom just completely take over the mushroom. There's so many magical and interesting and weird things about mushrooms and I don't find these all the time, but when I do, I can't help but play with them because they just remind me of how many things in this world are just unexpected. If you were interested, intrigued, curious, maybe even inspired by some of the information today, please go over to the information box attached to this video. I'll have all sorts of links and resources there for you to follow up on. Um, this is a topic I could talk about forever clearly, and I hope I've inspired you to think about mushrooms a little bit more and just investigate what's around you. If you liked anything in this video, if anything inspired you, or you're a big fan of mushrooms, please put a thumbs up on this video, make a comment, or even consider subscribing. All of those things, all that kind of support really helps my channel and it helps my videos be seen. I appreciate you, and until the next video, take care.